If you are an architect or student of architecture, you know that we cannot keep our productivity at the correct level without suitable hardware. Bearing in mind that and that the Black Friday deals have already started in most of the countries as well as that Intel and AMD recently released new processors, I will try to help you out and to give you proper information about the most suitable hardware for Revit needs and budget. Please keep in mind that this is not a sponsored video and that the only purpose is to try to help you to determine which hardware is the best for you. Key points which defined Revit Workstation are processor, graphic card, computer memory and fast hard drive. Revit works mainly in a single processor so we need the fastest single core. The key point when it comes to selecting the right processor is to check the highest frequency that can maximize performances of Revit. You need to consider two aspects. The first one is the processor based frequency and the second one is the processor maximum turbo frequency. Max turbo frequency is the maximum single core frequency at which the processor is capable of operating. Of the latest processors, I would recommend the 13th generation of Intel's uh, Raptor Lake processors and it's actually i5 30600K. It has 14 cores, 20 threads, a base frequency of 3.5 GHz and turbo frequency of 5.10 GHz. It costs similar to the newest Ryzen 5 7600X and uh, the Ryzen has 6 cores and 12 threads, 4.7 GHz base frequency and 5.3 GHz turbo boost. And if we compare them uh, in a benchmark, we can see that the i5 has more cores, can also operate with the DDR5 and DDR4 memories while the Ryzen can work only with the DDR5 memory and uh, what I can say is just a big thanks to Intel for this one. If you are a mainly Revit user and not doing a lot of rendering, this is going to fulfill your needs for sure no matters if you are working on a small or a larger project. So if you buy this as a started pack, this is going to be a great thing for you. Uh, on Amazon it costs around $300 and I think this is a very good deal for this money and as I said I'm pretty sure this will run very well if you are working, it doesn't matter which scale of the Revit project. So anything better from this one is just going to be better for you. Graphic card is another important factor for Revit performance. It is important to have a graphic card with the ray tracing technology and actually that's the best technology for Enscape, Twinmotion and Lumion, which probably a lot of you are familiar with. By the way, ray tracing is a method of graphic rendering that stimulates the physical behavior of light. What you also have to know is that for the optimal performance and efficiency you need enough graphic card memory. Minimum is 4 GB from my point of view and my experience I would recommend you to start at least with 6 but simply more is better in this case. And also very important tip when it comes to the graphic cards please be aware that you are always running the latest available driver for the graphic card you have. When it comes to graphic cards if you have a limited budget I would recommend you to go with AMD RX 6600 of, with 8 GB of RAM memory it costs around $260 on Amazon as you could see and I think this is a quite good graphic card. On the other hand, if you are Nvidia fan, you like their drivers, I would recommend you to start with RTX 2060 with 6GB of RAM memory and just please keep in mind that uh, this is just the started graphic card so you can work well with them I'm pretty sure but if you have more money and you can invest more into this part anything better from those two is just going to be better for you. The third key point which can increase Revit performances in sense of hardware is a computer memory actually it's a RAM memory. Revit says in its specification that the 16 gigabyte is a minimum. If you are an average user, I would recommend you 32 gigabytes at least. And if you are working with the large projects on a daily level, my recommendation is going to be 64 gigabyte. Since last year, DDR5 has been on the market. It's coupled with Intel 12th and 13th generation of processors as well as with the newest AMD Ryzen 7000 processors. It makes PCs faster and more powerful than ever before. And also, a recent crash in prices is a big added bonus for DDR5, so if you find it on a good discount these days, I think you should upgrade to DDR5 if you want to have a future proof for your computer. The cost of DDR5 memory with the 5600 uh, gigahertz is very affordable compared to 6 to 12 months ago 
like this one which costs around uh, 150 dollars and the fourth component which can increase uh, revit performances is uh, hard drive so i will just recommend you the fast hard drives it's very important and in that case i will just recommend you to have a solid state drive because it provides better performances in revit bearing in mind that the most frequent problem is that the lack of hard drive space after installing multiple software and that the Revit needs at least 30 gigabytes free space in a hard drive to perform well and to open large models because of its cache, I would recommend you to start with at least one terabyte, but anyway, not less than 500 gigabytes of the hard drive space. For the hard drives, I would recommend you this one or something similar and anything better than this one is just a plus and bigger. And last but not least, I have to give you some words about laptops as well. Uh, but before I proceed with it, I have to tell you that all this, those components cannot be worth enough if your Revit workflow is bad. I often hear from other people that their, their Revit files are often crashing, that the models work slow, etc. Even they have a powerful computer. So the crucial thing is to optimize your Revit project files. So, you have to know how to organize work set, if model is a big, how to split it into links, how many links. Uh, you should also have a good family files, etc. For example, I was working for the last four years only with the laptops, and it was HP laptops. First one was the HP G3 with Intel Xeon E3 1505M processor with a base clock of 2.8 and a turbo boost of 3.7. That one has 32 gigabytes of RAM memory and has a NVIDIA Quadro uh, M2000M with a 4 gigabytes dedicated memory. And this was one of the projects I was working on that laptop. And as I said before, I have never had the problems with crashing model or anything because this model was very well organized. After this one, I was using HP G8 Fury with i7 11800H and it had the NVIDIA RTX A3000 with 6GB of dedicated uh, RAM memory, 32GB of DDR4 and 500GB of SSD. And what I can say for the second one that I was literally impressed. I'm still working with a big project, uh, but for the last couple of months I have been using a PC and a laptop. My PC has AMD Ryzen 5900X processor, with a base clock of 3.7 i have 64 gigabytes of ram memory i have 8 gigabytes of graphic card and also have a couple of ssd hard drives the smallest one is one terabyte so what i can just say i'm really impressed this works very well on the other hand i'm using dell xps uh, 9500 with i7 10700h it has nvidia gtx uh, 1650 ti with uh, 4 gigabytes of video memory and 32 gigabytes of RAM memory. Also, there is a one terabyte of SSD drive and 4K screen. Honestly, the screen is amazing. I really enjoy working on that screen. But on the other hand, if I compare it with HP uh, G8 Fury, I cannot compare it, <laughs> to be honest. GH was a real fury for this one. And let me help you out with the best laptops I found on the Amazon for those deals if your budget is under one thousand dollars i would recommend you actually the best deal from my point of view i found on amazon is this hp victus 15 gaming laptop it's equipped with the 12th generation of intel i5 12500h and that one has 12 cores and 16 threads in total while the base frequency is 3.3 and the max turbo frequency is 4.5 gigahertz and I think it's going to perform very well. On the other hand, uh, it has the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 and it has 4 GB of DDR6 memory. It also has 32 GB of RAM and I think that this is going to be a very good deal for you and also it has... A if you have a budget of around $1.5,000, my recommendation is going to be this MSI Pulse GL66. It's equipped with i9-12900H and it's a very powerful processor. It has 14 cores, 20 threads, 3.8 base clock and 5 GHz of a max turbo frequency. Uh, on the other hand, this has NVIDIA RTX 3060 and that one has 6 GB of video RAM memory. This one has also 32 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of SSD drive, and it costs $1.5,000. And I think 
it's also as you could see 17 uh, percent on discount so i will rather go with this one i think this one is a very good one if you have a budget of two thousand dollars my recommendation will be a dell precision 5570 workstation newest model and it has a 12th generation of i7 processor 500 uh, gigabytes hard drive space, 32 gigabytes DDR5 memory, and NVIDIA RTX A2000. This one has 4 gigabytes of dedicated video memory. On the other hand, if you move forward and let's say you have a budget of 2.5 thousand, I would recommend you to go with this MSI Rider GE66, and it's equipped with also 12th generation of Intel i7 processor, this RTX uh, 3070 Ti graphic card and this graphic card has 16 gigabytes of ram memory which is really amazing and you also have one terabyte space of the hard drive and 32 gigabytes and i mean this is going to be a real machine i'm pretty sure i mean i know that you will be impressed if you take this one for for about let's say three thousand dollars i would recommend you to go with this asus zenbook pro duo 15 and i mean it has amazing screen, it has i9, 12th generation, 12900H, uh, it has 32GB of RAM, 1TB space, and again amazing graphic card, RTX 3070. If you have a budget over $3000 and considering the fact that I was working a lot with HP laptops, I had the ZBook Fury G8, and bearing in mind that the G9 uh, was recently released, I will sincerely recommend you that one. Anyway. If you pick any of the branded workstation and take in consideration aspects we spoke about, you will not make a mistake for sure. You also have to know that with the stationary computers you have more freedom in terms of budget and making a machine suitable for you, while with the laptop you have a real mobility freedom. Having both and having files on cloud is a very nice solution but it can cost a lot. I really hope that this video will help you with understanding what is good for Revit and for your needs in terms of hardware. If you have any questions about this topic, please feel free to write in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you want to support us, please like the video and subscribe to our channel.